I work with Lyndon LaRouche, who is an American economist and has been a candidate for U.S. president several times. His view of economics is that the creative ability of the human mind is the source of economic wealth. Maxime or Igmas is the perfect example because it provides a great benefit economically and it provides protection for humanity. So in the United States, there are two problems for implementation of this kind of pro um, program. The first is a political military problem. The second is a political economic problem. Next. Back in 1983, there was a program called the Strategic Defense Initiative. That was put forward by President Ronald Reagan. The American thinker Lyndon LaRouche had originated the idea. The plan was to cooperate with the Soviet Union against nuclear weapons, not just from US and Soviet Union, but also other third parties in the world. LaRouche wanted to assure that the United States and the Soviet Union would assure the survival of humanity, not mutually assured destruction. Next. Here you, you see Lyndon LaRouche and President Ronald Reagan. And uh, here you see one of our cartoons, where everybody has spears, but no one has a shield. Next. This is a, a pamphlet from 1983 that our political movement, LaRouche, had put out. It discussed how the energy of an anti-missile system, the new technologies, would provide great economic benefits. They would have payoffs far beyond the cost. Next. A problem currently for US-Russia cooperation is the United States being very provocative. The anti-missile system being set up in Eastern Europe is very difficult with Russia. It is a problem. Uh, next. If you look overall at the, the situation, you've got anti-missile systems, radars, all around Russia. This makes it difficult for the United States and Russia to work together on military matters at present. We've already seen conflict in Iraq and in Libya. Presently, the United States is pushing for a conflict with Syria and with Iran. This is a problem. Next. So, last year, 2011, Rogozin had proposed strategic defense of the Earth, similar to strategic defense initiative of Reagan of 1983. The potential would be for military cooperation, not against each other or against missiles, but against asteroids. This would be a helpful addition to the current work of IGMAS. I, I want people to know that in the United States, many people in the United States military do not agree with Obama. They do not want conflict with Syria or with Iran. Next. So now, economics. There are two large considerations in discussing IGMAS, planetary defense, etc., in the United States. The first one is that the economy is very difficult in the United States right now. And many politicians say there is no money. There is no money for asteroids. We have to spend the money here. The second is that NASA is having its budget cut continually by Obama and is less and less able to participate in such a program. Next. Here you see spending on NASA. If you compare during <coughs> the Apollo program, when we went to the moon, that is the, the peak. And it's come down very much since then. And it has continued under Obama. Next. The cost of a scientific program that is successful is zero. There is no cost. 
To understand this, let's think about three kinds of profits. First, monetary financial profit. With this kind of profit, you invest money and you get money. Second is physical profit, such as agriculture, industry, physical infrastructure. You invest one kind of labor, the return is different. The third is scientific profit. That's what I want to discuss more. Next. With scientific profit, the cost and the return are incommensurable. You cannot use the same kind of measurement, the same kind of unit. For example, in the United States, with the Apollo program to go to the moon, economists say that for one dollar invested, we get ten dollars payback, ten dollar profit. But are the dollars before and the dollars after, are they the same dollars? No. Next. Because you can measure something or identify parts does not mean you understand its whole. If you think about a poem, in a poem there are individual words. But a poet does not take a dictionary to write a poem. You start with one idea. Any description that takes forever and cannot be completed is not an accurate description. There is something missing. I'll give an example now. Next. Consider the square root of 2. It is a simple number. If you think about the number of fractions, there are an infinite number of fractions, but no fraction gives the square root of 2. It cannot measure it exactly. Next. 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 <coughs> One more. Okay. If you try to express the square root of 2 as a fraction, you write forever. It is not an actual measurement. One more example. Next. If you think of the sine and the cosine, it is a simple idea, but if you express it in algebra, it is never exact. Next. 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 Algebra goes forever, the circle is never completed. So, next. So why is this important? In economics, the value of economic profit from science is transcendental. In Apollo, we spend $1, like a fraction. The profit, the $10, is like the square root of 2, or the sine or cosine. The profit exists in an economy that as a whole is different. This is the basis of the LaRouche Riemann economic method. Uh, so, in this sense, profit is not local. It cannot be localized in one piece. The economy as a whole changes. We see this with Apollo. We could have seen this with the SDI if we had the new kinds of energy, the directed beam technologies, particle technologies. This would change the economy as a whole and it would be difficult to locate, localize the profit. The whole economy is different. As a very simple measure of this, Mr. LaRouche has proposed the potential relative population density. In other words, how many people can we support in one country? How many people can live on the planet? We increase that number Animals do not. We increase that number when we get a new technology, and science is the source of these technologies that transform our economy as a whole. Next. 
the defense of humanity with space technology, as with Digmas, Maxim, the strategic defense of the Earth, this is an excellent proposal. It has an excellent political opportunity for collaboration with other nations. And the economics, it is essential. Right now, in the United States, in Europe, uh, the economy is very bad. And people say, maybe we cannot afford this. This costs too much money, too expensive. The opposite is true. We must do these programs because the economy is bad. Science programs have the biggest benefit in economics. For planetary defense, if we develop new rockets based on fission, maybe based on fusion, nuclear propulsion for, for the rockets, the payback for the economy as a whole, if we have fusion electricity, the payback would be phenomenal. So the LaRouche Policy Institute wishes for the success, uh, the continued success of the Igmas Maxim project. We are working in the United States to get the United States working as collaborators against the threat of asteroids, against the threat of earthquakes, against the threat of hurricanes, instead of the threat of Syria or Iran. So I'd like to say one thing is that, um, I, well, oops, I'll say it. Um, our, if you'd like more information on this, we have, we have material on it. I don't speak Russian, but we have people in the LaRouche Policy Institute who do, so you can feel free to leave your coordinates to be in touch. Я не, не владею свободно русским языком, но у нас есть вся информация об институте Ларуш, политике, институте политики Ларуш. Если вы заинтересованы, пожалуйста, дайте мне свои координаты, и я только буду приветствовать это. So I say thank you, and if there are any questions. Если какие-то вопросы, пожалуйста.